determine the force in each member of the truss and state if the members are in tension or compression. This is the second example for the trusses main lecture video. The link to other examples in that main video are in the description below. As opposed to the first example, where we can use the method of joints at a joint where an external load is applied without having to find the reaction forces at the supports, in this problem, neither joint A or B and the two associated equilibrium equations, sum of forces in X and Y, would suffice to solve for the three variables in each case. For that reason, we will begin by finding the reaction forces at E and D, which always requires us to draw a free body diagram of the entire structure and write the equilibrium equations. To get rid of two of the three variables we have here, we'll begin with a sum of moments about D to solve for the Y reaction at E. A sum of forces in Y would allow us to solve for dy and the sum of forces in x for dx. Knowing the reaction forces at D and E, we have two options for using the method of joints. Since for every joint we have two equations in a 2D problem, sum of forces in x and y, we'll begin with joint D that only has two unknown variables. The sum of forces in y allows us to solve for FDE and the sum of forces in x for FDC. With the value for FED, we can now move to joint E to solve for FEA from a sum of forces in X and solve for FEC from a sum of forces in Y. Remember that the values I'm using to find the components in the X and the Y axis of the vectors come from the given values for the distances of the truss and the hypotenuse from the Pythagorean theorem. For a refresher on that, I'll leave a link in the description below. Moving on to joints C, B, and F, we see that at joint C, we only have two unknown variables. Once we find FCB, we'll also have two unknown variables at B, and finally only FFA as an unknown variable at F. So starting with joint C, we do sum of forces in Y to find FCF, and sum of forces in X to find FCB. At B, we do sum of forces in X for FBA, and Y for FBF. And finally, a sum of forces in X for joint F allows us to solve for FFA. With all the values for the internal forces, and because we assumed tensile forces for all vectors, like suggested in the main video, positive values will be tensile and negative values will be compressive. Looking at the values we obtained, we can highlight the members that are under compression, which are the ones with a negative value, and we can highlight those that are under tension which are the ones with a positive value. For more truss examples, including some where we use the method of sections, as well as the links to the other main lecture videos from the static scores, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.